Hello everyone and welcome to my Sister Wives For You channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sister Wives MVP is regarded as Christine Brown. That's because she was the first to point out that Cody treated his fourth wife differently than he did the other wives. She chose to break up with him as a result. Janelle and Mary gained the confidence to leave the polygamist behind once she left. Christine has since tied the knot and found love once more. The latest season makes it very evident that Christine is as self-assured and self-assured as ever. She has now made the decision to file a lawsuit and request custody and visitation rights for her youngest kid, who is actually Cody's daughter. Fans observed a significant shift as she submitted court filings for the same. It appears that Christine no longer uses Brown as her last name. Christine is now officially Christine Woolley on Sister Wives, demanding legally for true custody. Christine is still well-liked by Sister Wives fans. Among all the Sister Wives, she was the first to leave her abusive multiple marriage. After relocating to Utah, she married David Woolley after falling in love with him once more. They will soon celebrate their one-month wedding anniversary. Fans are aware of their seriousness and commitment to one another. When Christine was promoting her new bed and breakfast, followers had already noted that her name was Christine Brown Woolley. However, it appears that the celebrity has abandoned the Brown last name completely in yet another alteration. According to the court filings, she is requesting that Cody give her daughter Truly's custody. In addition, she's attempting to prove paternity. But that's not all. Christine is supported by an attorney. The Sister Wives actor has also made demands for child support from her polygamous husband, who appears to be solely focused on his five children and fourth wife. The audience is thrilled to witness this kind of transformation. They also think it's a really daring decision for Christine to give up her prior last name, Sister Wives. Christine pursuing Cody in court for the honor of truth. There were a number of loopholes when Sister Wives began a union with Cody. His first legal marriage was to Mary. However, he later divorced her in order to wed Robin and adopt her children. Christine and Janelle, meanwhile, were merely the polygamist's spiritual spouses. The ex-third wife made the decision to clarify matters at last. Right present, Christine is pursuing legal action to prove that she is Truly's father. This is due to the fact that Cody and her were not lawfully wed. But that's not all. She also requests a visiting plan so that the polygamist can regularly see his daughter. In addition, Christine requests that Cody pay child support. Fans already know that he and Robin are struggling through a financial crunch so far. Cody has not yet replied with any legal action against this. Christine, meanwhile, is prepared to go to court as usual and has attorneys on hand. Fans are pleased to watch the drama roll out as they believe Cody deserves it after years of mistreating his kids or being a father figure out of convenience. Although Christine Brown appears content for the moment, it's possible that she regrets allowing sister wives to document her union with David Woolley. Christine is more accustomed to living her life on a reality TV program than David is. In 2010, she debuted on television. Together with her husband, Cody Brown, her two sister wives and their 12 children, she inhabited a spacious home in Utah at the time. Cody had married Robin Brown, his fourth wife, by the time the first season aired, and she had brought her three children from her prior marriage into the family. Ultimately, Cody had 18 children and four women, but the patriarch of sister women was unable to keep his family together for very long. After 27 years of matrimony, Cody's third wife, Christine Brown, filed for divorce in 2021. She soon met and fell in love with David Woolley, whom she married in a sister wife's wedding special that was broadcast on television. Their relationship will be the focus of sister wives season 19, based on what we've seen so far. It might be the worst thing that could happen to them. Christine met David soon after leaving Cody, and they dated for less than a year before moving in together. Their large mixed family consists of eight children and ten grandchildren for David, a widower. Christine and David got engaged quickly, and their televised wedding followed. David might grow to regret altering his mind, even though he previously stated he had no interest in being in sister wives. Sister Wives has functioned as a cemetery for failed unions. Christine wasn't the last of Cody's spouses to leave him. She gave birth to five of his children. After 29 years of marriage and five children, Janelle Brown, Cody's second wife, 
broke their spiritual union in 2022. Later that year, Mary Brown, Cody's first wife and the mother of one of his children, called it quits on their 32-year marriage. In the opening scene of the 19th season premiere of Sister Wives, Cody unintentionally enters into a monogamous relationship with Robin, and even that marriage is currently experiencing difficulties. It's possible that Christine realized that appearing on the show wasn't the best choice for her marriage. Even though Christine is accustomed to being on TV, David's life will be completely upended by this abrupt change. Despite their divorce, Robin and Christine, who star in Sister Wives, are still in a relationship. The split pair will continue to see one other at difficult gatherings for the remainder of their lives, and they still have five children together. It was incredibly awkward when Cody and Christine first met at Michael T. Brown's baby shower in the Sister Wives season 19 premiere. Christine's involvement in the drama is one thing, but doing it live on TV is quite another. Christine might regret not having announced her new marriage on TV. This past Sunday night, Cody Brown reaffirmed what has been evident for the past 18 seasons, in case it wasn't. He truly is so incredibly awful. Cody discussed his three unsuccessful marriages on the most recent episode of Sister Wives, reserving his harshest criticism for his ex-wife Mary. Brown said that their romance lacked a lot of wisdom. For example, after learning that Mary had gone to the church to get a formal release from their spiritual union, Brown said this in a mean-spirited way. When we got married I had no idea who she was. She was not like the other at all. I believe that Mary carried some baggage that I was initially unaware of. I thought I could put up with it, but I can't live in a world where she's always upset with me. After exchanging vows in 1994, Cody and Mary divorced in 2010 to allow Cody to wed Robin Brown and formally adopt her children from a prior marriage. Despite not sleeping together, the couple continued to be together until January 2023, when they eventually decided to separate. Then stating that the damage was done, and that he didn't want to be held accountable to this church and all their BS, Cody expressed his disagreement with Mary's choice to attend the church. The conceited 17-year-old father continued by explaining that, in a polygamous family, a man has no choice after he's already married. In a plural marriage, he cannot ask for a divorce if he wishes to remain obedient and in the faith, Cody stated. That is not permitted. Thus I was unable to end that relationship. However, he was able to act like a terrible jerk and make Mary come to this conclusion. However, I wasn't really sure that I wanted to end the relationship. Cody went on television saying, I wanted to know if we could save and fix it. There was a subtlety to it all like we're going to work things out in our relationship like there were multiple occasions when I felt like it was time for a fresh start with her. We will solve this problem. However, Cody never really gave it a go. Every time they spent time together he continued Mary wasn't nice, wasn't fun, wasn't kind, and wasn't interested. I'm bored but I'm trying to be intrigued with her. Mary feels abandoned as a result I suppose that be fair, Cody informed the audience. Mary stated in the season 19 premiere that Cody attempted to force her out of the marriage, making it obvious where she stood at the conclusion of their relationship. Mary said, I really feel bad for him, referring to her ex-husband. Cody is now solely married to Robin, of course. After realizing how unbalanced their marriage was, Cody's other three marriages left, leaving him to play the victim, and to acknowledge that he had no strong feelings for any of them. I didn't expel me. Cody went on in this new episode. Christine, Janelle, and Mary all chose to have me leave the home. Now I'm not trying to be the victim here. I'm just stating the facts as they are. No matter how much I didn't love them, I wasn't going to leave them. Subsequently, Robin informs us that Cody persistently tries to convince her to go out and dance at a club, but she refuses. She expresses her frustration with always being the pole, as Cody dances all around her. The Ashley Last summarized a sister women event a very long time ago. As suckers are aware, Christine was well suited to move over her companion Cody's ugly lip ma, pride, and pitiful mound of top ramen ringlets and married David. Naturally, the network was gracious enough to produce a special about Christine and David's wedding, because TLC wants to milk this cash cow for all it's worth. Ashley reasoned that the best way to celebrate would be to finish watching the second half of the Christine and David wedding special. Shall we begin this nonsense now? We begin part two of the marriage special by recapping part one, which depicts Christine and David, the anti-Cody locks, 
getting ready in the final days before their nuptials. Cody and the last woman are seen. Robin was standing there discussing the upcoming apousal, to which they were not invited. Cody is doing a wonderful job of holding his lingo together to appear good, but let's face it, he has that ridiculous bill, so there's no stopping it from passing. Robin is attempting to prevent Cody from setting up his enormous trap and causing further harm, if that is even possible, to her fantasy of enjoying her expanding family while resting on a veranda chair, and bragging about how, despite her family's ladies, she and Cody are still performing the vertical mambo far into their 80s. For decades, those chilly, lonely loins have been gathering cobwebs. Simply put, it is really illegal that this will never be. Oh, how darn Christine be. After that, we see the opening titles, which continue to feature Cody and Robin for whatever reason. Even though Mary seems to have no idea what the hell, or who the hell, Christine has been up to since she swagger tagged her burrow out of Flagstaff, she does manage to bring her smiling mug into the great outdoors. With his slim mug shining in the sun, Cody knows he has a contractual obligation to participate in this special. After all, there's no bone in his body. Desires for him to be there. On the day of the marriage, part two begins. The form stage is prepared, and Christine gets ready to slip into her dress, which, fortunately, fits her far better than the hideous satin gown she wore on the gloomy day she wed Cody. Christine's daughters encourage her as she agitates to put on the outfit. Christine is ecstatic and feels grateful. The notion of getting married to a man who has no other women and doesn't seem to care about finances is almost too significant for her to manage. David, in the meantime, is just nipping and waiting for someone to direct him, along with his white-black fly sunglasses, wherever to go. David is spending time with the various brown family girls' misters. David is given advice by Michael T's husband Tony Padrone, tacos for 200 people, and Maddie's husband Caleb Brush, I nearly got a restraining order to keep Cody down from me, on how to be a good husband in this family, basically, don't be Cody. The girls have Christine dressed and ready for her wedding. Christine is gorgeous and all of her daughters aside from Gwendolyn, who missed the wedding due to being busy, as well as Janelle's son Maddie are shrieking with joy at her happiness. Thankfully, they advised him to ditch the Flavortown Sunnies. David's daughters are getting ready to walk Dad down the aisle at the form. As soon as the music begins, a large group of the couple's granddaughters go down the aisle, followed by David and Christine's children and other family members. Truly, the young son of Christine and Cody is the ring bearer and struts his ass out of a black suit. Christine eventually shows there and begins to go down the aisle with Paydon, her only child. David is a decent man, he tells her. Christine's father assumes control and leads her on her last leg of the aisle prom. Janelle clarifies that the father of Christine, Rex still believes strongly in polygamy, but he accepts Christine's choice to wed David instead of Cody. David's son-in-law Corbin is the one marrying the couple, and he starts off by talking about how great David is and how he spends his free time furrowing driveways for single maters. Christine beams at David saying, I guess if I had spent 30 times with a man who kept smirching me intimately on television for eating nachos one time decades ago, I'd be enough damn happy to have my man tell me I looked good. And trinkets. When the time comes for the eye dose, Christine is making coitus eyes toward David. As long as they both live, David promises to embrace Christine's eccentricities and her bents, and presumably not smirch her for any nacho-related conditioning. Christine says her I do as well delivers Christine's non clado marriage ring and says, You deserve the fashionable one, mother. Christine purposefully leaves out the five kids Rob allows, telling viewers in a confessional that all thirteen of her kids are protective of her. They ultimately exchange rings and are addressed as husband and wife. Christine chooses to give a passionate French kiss to complete the union. As the audience applauds Christine and David, as well as David's sad, blue-balled loins, make their way back down the aisle as she jams her language all the way into David's soul. Someone please go check on poor Rex. Back on the depressingly empty grounds of Cody and Robin's mansion, the coiled one is telling the cameras that Christine doesn't require his permission to wed another guy. He adds that the only thing that worries him is how his kids are handled in David's relationship. Hey dude, you're worried about your kids now? If you can legally name every one of your kids without Robin's assistance, I'll give you a continuous force of spray scum.
Cody claims that his children are now old enough to interact with David and be fine. To his credit, Cody acknowledges that he hasn't really had enough time to form an opinion about David. He tells the cameras that he has only before met David, thus it is difficult for him to respond to these inquiries, which are undoubtedly made by an overly eager customer. But Robin is furiously furrowing her brows as Cody speaks, ready to strike back if Cody calls them out for being so dumb as to force them to cancel this dreadful program. Cody says he hopes Christine and David have a happy life, and I think he means it. It's strange to see Cody acting civil. Robin appears relieved, but Cody also picks on where he left off, and it seems like she knows he's going to say something dumb. Eventually, Cody adds, I'm just going to keep talking until the cameras go down. Robin, the number one addict, leaps at the chance to slap Cody's lips in an attempt to stop him talking. Next, Robin speaks with us directly, sharing that witnessing Christine's happiness as she escapes from her and Cody's grasp has been really, really delicate for her. It forces me to pause and consider whether multiple marriage is actually successful. No. Robin, the response is no. Multiple marriages aren't silly, especially if the husband dedicates all of his time to intimately marrying only one of the ladies and handles the other females, similar to friends you used to visit once a week. Regarding the marriage, Christine was unconcerned about plural marriage. She probably doesn't want to hear that term again. She's taking her colorful family members to Hollywood. Michael T. unleashes her inner Mary and begins dictating to David's family where they should stand during group photos. After that, a few of the brown girls discuss why they're just refusing to double or triple up on a husband. Michael T. remarks, I actually suppose that polygamy is a terrible idea feeling that it wasn't fair to her parents. None of them succeeded in getting what they wanted from a union. Michael T. continues, I don't think polygamy is something anybody deserves. Then we see Michael T. yelp like a dog to entice Janelle to pose for a picture. Or commodity, I have no idea what the heck is going on. Janelle also says that it seems right to witness Christine and David get married. She sees a lot more joy ahead for the couple. Janelle describes Christine and David as, I see them sitting on the veranda on rocking chairpersons, watching their grandkids. Janello, you mischievous little devil you. With that sentence, you were completely aware of what you were doing. Then I'm all for it. Janelle does say that if any of the other children, that is, the Roblets, wanted to join their new expanded family, she would be game. We would be happy to welcome any of the children who aren't here now, she continues. Mary is wheeled out to idly pour over her studies. Despite the fact that she is no longer with Kevin, she maintains that she is in a really, really good place in her life. She looks forward to her chance at finding true love and believes she will eventually find someone who truly loves her and isn't just being nice to her. Maybe in 2024 there will be a Family Women Mary Gets Married special? You already know that Mary has a swain because she just blazoned that fact.